OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Perfect. Thank you, Jill. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Archana with my team from Campbell Adult and Community Education case. Uh, we will be talking this afternoon about connecting students to hybrid learning. This is our agenda for this afternoon. Meet the team, our school, our hybrid program, and connecting our students. The word hybrid was a rare terminology just two years back. We hardly you know, spoke about hybrid. February, March 2020 seems so long back as we've made leaps and bounds in distance learning since the time pandemic hit. Summer of 2020, our administrators approached us to talk to us about OTAN's Distance Learning Academy or DLAC. We were fortunate to be selected. And this is our team, Jill Moresi, Lars Gantwet, both ESL teachers, and our digital support for student orientation, and Archana, which is me, and I teach high school equivalency. Next slide, Jill. <clears throat> Thank you. So CASE or Campbell Adult and Community Education, we are located in San Jose. We are an independent, separately funded program of Campbell Union High School District, serving the communities in part of South Bay. We offer ESL, high school, community interest, citizenship, and basic skills classes and support our students with free academic and career counseling services. Uh, with our mission in mind, we work with partner organizations, community colleges, and community-based organizations to address individual needs and goals of our students. Our mission, the mission of Campbell Adult and Community Education is to advance our community's economic workforce development and students' quality of life by raising all forms of literacy and preparing learners for careers, college, and civic responsibility. Our schools was opened in 2020, and today we serve around um, in 10 locations um, in, in the South Bay. And we have classes that are hybrid, distance learning, independent study, and also some classes are fully online to support all student needs. We have classes in the evenings, mornings, and weekends to make learning accessible to all students. Next slide, Jill. This is our student population. We are um, one of the few schools which have about 25% Asian students, which I think is not very common in most adult schools. Um, so next slide, Jill. Yeah. Case goals. Our goals, like most schools for the year 2021, has been to increase enrollment, increase student persistence, improve student learning outcomes. And we commit to an equity approach, taking into consideration inclusion, giving students supportive services and differentiations of instruction. So take away, Jill. All right, thanks, Archana. So we're gonna talk about the 21-22 school year. And before we could begin our school year, we needed to make some decisions and find the best solution for our school. So we did have a challenge. What was CASE going to look like for this school year 21-22? And how are we going to come up with a plan? So we're gonna take a minute and look at the CASE timeline, which is going to be familiar to many of you. Um, back in 2019, 2020, we were all in our traditional classrooms, face to face, working with our students. We had textbooks and workbooks in hand. We were also adding blended learning elements and 
technology, experimenting with technology, and many teachers were embracing different tech tools and applications at their own pace, and it was good. But then we moved into 2020, and before we knew it, we were abruptly locked down and locked out of our classrooms. Can you believe that it's been two years now? Looking for reactions. Okay, so as we moved into the next school year, 2020, 21, in the context of the pandemic, we found ourselves safely confined to our homes while our classrooms were reduced to a 13 inch screen for most of us. Strangely enough, this small screen actually opened up our worlds as we embraced teaching and learning online and we developed strength, courage, and the ability to adapt and grow. So in our virtual classrooms, we found connection and comfort and consistency during a time of great uncertainty. So as we moved into 2021, this past school year, it became clear that the pandemic wasn't going away. And teaching with technology was here to stay. But how were we going to find a way? That's what we're going to talk about today. No, we're not going to talk about 2022 because alas, I don't have a clue. So there we were, online learning, safe and sound at home for an entire year. But it was time to get ready to move along. And, it was, and we decided to compare our options. What would we do for the school year? Should we remain online or should we step back into the classroom? Well, the pandemic was being difficult and it looked like our best option perhaps was to look at the hybrid learning format. So we took a poll. Actually, we surveyed many students and teachers and staff but as you can see here, uh, number one would have been online learning. Who wants to go back to, or stay in, online, in the online learning environment? Two would be hybrid format. And three would be let's go back to the classroom. And the winner was, any guesses? Hybrid learning, yay, for the hybrid learning. So we transitioned back to the classroom or we were going to make the plan to transition back to the classroom while supporting our students. And that's what we're going to be discussing. Lars, why don't you tell us about the plan? So we started to look at the process and, and this is a process that was um, really created by the administration of our, of our school and, and the process um, we had to look at a, a concept development, um, creating a design for, for our hybrid learning. And then finally, it, it has to go back to the students. We have to figure out how do we connect with our students. Um, so the concept began with the idea of hybrid classes. So if we think of um, um, needing hybrid, this was basically the school's response to the need for in-person classes while still respecting the fragility of person-to-person -person COVID exposure. So that was the concept that we were, were dealing with. Uh, the school developed a two-day in-person, two-day online format. Um, most of our classes were, were, were designed to be with that kind of a hybrid um, model. We also had some classes that were fully online and some classes that were simply one day online three days um, in person for different reasons, for different reasons. Um, so as we see the volatility of COVID variants recently has, has actually made this kind of limited engagement system very, very useful. When we get into the design, um, the design required um, various levels of online involvement. Some students were fully online uh, with courses. Some of them, most of the classes followed that two-day online 
two day in class model, while others just had one day that was online. The bottom line here, but too many uh, lines here, I guess. <laughs> the bottom line overall was that the design of the system required a massive student participation uh, with online elements. So this design that we're creating needed to have, needed to integrate all of that technology training into the intake process. So finally connect, how do we connect with the students? We needed to build a system that front loaded student technology training even before the students joined the classroom. We needed a tech boot camp for our students. Uh, and the boot camp model needed to be robust enough to provide ongoing support for students even after they became integrated into the classroom. So we needed digital literacy support personnel. Focus on connection. So now we're now we're down to that connection area and we're looking specifically, what does that connection mean? How does it work? When we look at our intake, we're going to look at our orientation training. Um, we're going to see how the students connect with the hybrid classroom. And then we're going to look at this new concept also of digital support. Um, the process started with our intake procedure. We developed a rolling intake process that the, where the intake became almost a monthly process. Uh, intake provided the number of new students and their ESL levels that they're going to be going into. Once we knew the intake population for that month, we could divide students into groups for technology heavy uh, orientation or tech boot camp. And these were week long, this is a week long course. So student advisors, along with a new position of a digital literacy support staff, would manage the course and provide login, Zoom, email, Google Classroom, and Canvas uh, uh, training for the students. Students would come out of the week long course ready for online learning. Finally, the digital literacy support staff were teachers tasked with providing one-on-one -on -one support for students if they needed additional training. They could, on call, provide immediate help for students needing Zoom or login assistance. Students could come on campus during their Zoom days for one-on-one -on -one assistance with logging in or with in-class technology questions. So students would, during their Zoom classes, log in to, or, or come on campus so they could log into the, the, the Zoom class with the digital literacy support staff person side by side with them, helping them, stepping them through teacher made worksheets, stepping them through uh, Jamboard activities stepping them through screen sharing activities. So all of those activities that they had to do live in Zoom, they could actually have one-on-one -on -one support through the digital literacy support staff. Take it away. So connection is key for our students to onboard to our hybrid program. So as Lars was describing, we have uh, the boot camp in a four day format. So I'm going to take us through some examples of our Case Connect boot camp. First of all, we house the lessons in Canvas, in a Canvas um, classroom. And so I'm going to take us into this. Are you ready? Ready, set, connect. Here we go. All right, so we'll look at the teacher view. Okay, so what I did was I divided the four days into categories and into this menu here. I put welcome first and the rest are alphabetical, but you can do it if you were to design this, you could do it any way you would like. So we have the welcome. We have a lesson on the students accounts because that take some time to get them familiar with their laptops and their school accounts, how to log in, their special passwords, and so on and so forth. So that's a special lesson. Um, boot camp here, this is an outline of our 
week, basically. So if a teacher were to just want to take a peek, what am I doing tonight? Then they could scroll down to day one, day two, and just get an overview quickly of what's up for the day. The other things on the menu would be the email, or I'm sorry, coaches. If you need to contact your digital literacy coaches right away, they could just log, who are they? When are they working? Um, you just quickly pop into that button. And then we have an, a special email lesson for day four where they are introduce, our students introduce themselves to their teachers. Um, also, this is the, well, we'll go, we'll go back to that. But laptops and teachers and Zoom. This is a teacher resource section specifically for orientation. We'll come back to that. So here's at a glance, a quick reference guide. So this is the boot camp overview. Day one is welcome and accounts. So we're going to jump into the welcome lesson so you can get an idea. So this would be day one of our boot camp where we welcome our new students. This lesson introduces our new students to Campbell Adult and Community Education. Students will log into their school laptops and their new accounts, and they will learn about CASE, make introductions, and talk about their goals. So our evening is about two hours every night. For, for I do the night, Lars was in the day. The daytime is two hours as well. So I've embedded a Google Doc into Canvas so I can update it. I can make changes very easily. I found um, using Google Docs to be uh, much easier than the Canvas um, interface. It was a little, it wasn't as easy for me. So I just used the Google Doc. So welcome to day one. Um, so anyone can step in to this lesson plan and follow the steps and our students will be on their way. So for what we did at CASE, first we welcome our new students. I also had two, um, one or two teacher aides assisting for the orientation and that's very helpful. So uh, item number two, students check in with their teacher, the teacher's assistant, and they take out a Chromebook laptop. Then they, uh, the teacher's assistant distributes all their new account information and they begin to log on with their new school Gmail and password. So that takes some time. Once they log on to their account, since it is a Google account, um, they, we have them look for the waffle, the apps. This waffle here. And we have them find their Gmail account. So once they identify that, it's also a separate link. We point those things out, but it's, I do like them to zero in on the app. Like, what are they looking for? Gmail. So once they find their Gmail, they open it and they read an email from me, the teacher, where I invite them to join the orientation class on a Google Classroom that I set up just for orientation. So then they have to go back to the apps and, and notice that Google Classroom also has a separate icon. So when we jump into the, um, the Google Classroom, I'll, we'll just do this quickly so you can get an idea. Come back, Classroom. Doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. So I'm gonna scroll down to the beginning. This was our last orientation. So in our orientation, we have all the levels, levels one through four. So um, I like to keep everyone as busy as possible while the assistant uh, teachers are helping the students log in. So I have them say hello, so they get used to the Google Classroom stream, it's like Facebook, I tell them. And then I tell them to click on the link here, and I set up a Quizlet study set so they can review the uh, vocabulary words pertaining to our school. Just the things that will be um, talked about in our slide presentation later on in the evening. So they are introduced to some of these words. 
and they are also um, becoming familiar with the Quizlet app. How many of you use Quizlet already? Probably everybody. I just want to take a peek at the group and say hello for a minute. I can't really see anyone. There you are. Can you all raise your hand if you use Quizlet? It's kind of been around a while now, but I love it. One, two, three. Yeah. Any chance I get, it's Quizlet time. So, so they keep busy and they go through these um, activities while the students are coming in to the classroom. Let me see if I can go back to the stream. Another thing, so the students are saying hello, hello. Um, and then I want them to say where they're from. So we keep the conversation going a little bit more. And I have this on the projector. So I'm thinking classroom community right away. So uh, where's Ji Young? Ji Young, she's from South Korea, look. Okay, so immediately we're identifying each other, uh, who, where we're from and becoming familiar with uh, the student population. And there are many different uh, countries joining us. Okay, let me move up. Another thing I have them do, um, now if the, I don't want the upper levels or any of the students that are more comfortable with tech, I do actually want everyone to do the digital literacy survey. I have to quick pop in my name here, I think. Oh no, it's already done. Um, the survey helps us, helps me glance you know, at the charts on this Google form and I can see how, they, how comfortable they are with technology. So um, I got this from, I think, a school in Pennsylvania, and it was on an open-ended resource from Katisal. So I said, hey, this is awesome. I'm gonna pop this into orientation. So anything like this where you can assess your students quickly, and they're using technology, and um, everything's working together at the same time. People are keeping busy, others are being helped during the orientation. And at the end, I have a good idea of what's going on with our students and their skill level. Okay, so I find out what if they're using a computer, a tablet, an iPhone, and what kind of computers they're using. Or, this is key here, I don't have a computer. So during orientation, I, uh, on night one or day one, it's important to find out who needs a computer. And we offer computers to our students for a $50 deposit. And we also work with the library as well. And they, they help students with um, Chromebooks or laptops. Do we have any questions so far? Take a little pause. So far, so good? Okay, so this gives you an idea of one of the first things we do. Going back to the orientation again. Um, let's see, this is a different situation. This goes on to night two. So let me jump back over to our list of things to do here. So here's the vocabulary that's already on the orientation. So a teacher walking into this following directions would set up a quick Google Classroom and invite the new students into the classroom. And then we have our welcome presentation. And this is where we introduce the students to the school. It's a brief presentation and I won't go through it, but as you see, we have the slide deck here where we Welcome the students to CASE. We talk about our different classes that we offer. Talk about COVID, the pandemic rules, other classes, and just um, the basics of the school. Welcome to CASE. So that gives us an idea of the first part, lesson A. Lesson B, after we take a short break, we focus on the student accounts and we look at the um, keyboard and we identify the shift key and the mouse and scrolling two fingers and how to click on the tabs, go back and forth. And 
What does toggle mean? So we have time to work on that and get the students comfortable on the laptops. And then we log out for the night and say goodbye. Okay. All righty. So that, that gives us a good idea. Where am I? Let me go back to this one. Ready, set, connect. So that's night one or day one of Case Connect. Um, the other ones would include a Zoom lesson where we identify the Zoom features and we focus on preparing the students for Zoom. And then on the third night, we actually send the students home and we Zoom. So night three is really key because that tells me who's going to need extra help on night four or day four. So we Zoom and we have a special lesson on Zoom and we just carry on with a regular ESL lesson, multi-level. And we have a video that's really special that we show about grandpa. You may have seen it where grandpa is learning how to use English and then he makes a trip to meet someone special. Okay, so we watch that video and then we come back into the classroom on day four where we do troubleshooting in the classroom. You know, I had trouble with this. The volume is a big one. They don't know, sometimes uh, they have unmuted the buttons and yet we still can't hear them. And sometimes they just have the volume off itself. So we try to identify those um, details that are giving them trouble and resolve as many issues as we can. And then that's it. They're ready to go, ready to Zoom. And once they connect and step into the classroom, the teacher may ha continue with Google Classroom or their new teacher may be on Canvas. So they make th those connections into the new learning management systems. So in the hybrid format, we're two days online and two days in the classroom. So I teach out of Canvas, I use Canvas. So I stay in Canvas all week, whether I'm online or in the classroom. So the students have a home base and they can see all the work that I give them and the details. If they miss class, they know how to catch up. So we really, I really enjoy working with Canvas and we look forward to next year when everyone comes aboard working with Canvas. Any questions so far? Okay. That's interesting, Jill, you were talking how you work in, in Canvas throughout the entire um, uh, four days. I'm actually doing a little bit different. I do, when I do in-class sessions, um, I'm working more um, directly paper pencil kind of works on the in-class sessions. And I leave my Canvas, I actually have Google, one group in Canvas and one group in Google Classroom um, yeah. because they started in Google Classroom and I just didn't want to force them to go into another uh, LMS. So so interesting, I'm, 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 I'm we're, <laughs> Obviously, we're, we're, we're different teachers. We're working different uh, models. I actually have paper and pencil the days that we are in physical class. Mm -hmm. And when we're in, in um, online, that's where I integrate the, uh, the, the Google Classroom material for, my one, for one class, for my morning class, or the Canvas material um, for, the, for the evening class. Nice. OK. Yeah, Let's we see. have a question. Can you read the question, please? Yes. So did Case use Google Classroom and or Canvas pre-pandemic teaching? So. I used, I was in a blended learning class for quite a few years. I was always interested in online teaching and learning. So um, I took a, a seminar or two on Google Classroom. So I implemented it early on and use the interface with our students. I would pop up the vocabulary, just the small things like you, you see. I, I did not use it extensively, but I kept it I, as a daily tool for continuity. So Yeah, we, we, most of the teachers, 
most of the teachers uh, pre-pandemic were not using yeah. uh, uh, either Canvas or, or nobody was using Canvas. Some student, some teachers were using Google Classroom. I was using Google Classroom a little bit for just trying to um, begin getting students used to um online learning but it wasn't you know back in those days we were not really pushing hard on on online learning um and basically our use of canvas came about through the uh dlac process um the first dlac is a two-year process and archana uh, jill and i were working through dlac our first year project was to um was to pilot um a canvas in our in our school and so we actually over the course of the year learned about canvas and that's kind of like the subject of our our second presentation tomorrow which um we i recommend all of you to attend um and that's kind of like the process of how that dlac group um supported everybody in their um um in their dlac uh, projects and canvas was our project and we needed the we ne used the strength of the DLAC group to help us navigate the mm -hmm. starting and the the initial education on how do I how do I create something in Canvas um, for my class, um, and that was that was really what we did with our our first program um uh, our first year program with DLAC is is piloting canvas now we have not only ourselves working in canvas there's a couple of other teachers two or three teachers that are working in canvas and most everyone else is working in google classroom um, but we are we are transitioning cases transitioning right now to be a fully uh, uh canvas school and probably everyone will be 90% of the teachers will be running in Canvas um, uh, in the next school year. But we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but that's kind of the trend within case. Much of the initial fear, kind of uncertainty, now there's enough teachers with comfort levels in Canvas that we can, we can um, um, smoothly transition the whole team into, into Canvas. Absolutely. Yes. Any other so, questions? Yes, there was a question on, um, you know, what kind of training do teachers receive to be able to teach um, hybrid classes? So, okay. very good question. Yeah, that's a really good question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Jackie Strobel. If if I may, I would like to share some information about that. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I teach at um, at uh, Saddleback and Orange Coast on the credit side, yes. and I'm also at Santiago Canyon College on the non-credit side. That's and true. the in the that world, the Canvas is available to the instructors. Uh, of course, the college is the one who is paying. Right. But in each of these colleges, they do provide. Canvas training, which where they have actually certificates where an individual can attend that training for sometimes I think it's four months or six months. Mm -hmm. It's self paced, but it's structured in that there's assignments that are due each week. And they're very robust training because they provide all the bells and whistles that you need to understand Canvas, to understand how to build a solid online class, how to make navigation easy. Mm -hmm. um, and so usually these colleges are very, um, I don't know right the word is, but for example, when I obtained my certificate from Saddleback, mm -hmm. Santiago would not accept it. So I had to do the training in oh. Santiago to get certified wow. and the same thing. So each college is very, um, 
I don't, I don't know what word to use. <laughs> but, no, but in other words, they want you to attend their training within that college. Sure. And I will say that it's been very beneficial because I learned a lot and you learn a lot. However, the community, the California Community College, they do have what is called a O-Net training, which yes. um, is available for anyone to participate in to actually go through that training. Um, and I can, if you'd like, I can, you know, provide a link in the chat okay. that actually provides some resources and training that is available. Some of them are free. Some of them are with the cost, but there is training available. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you so much. I'm going to quick add to that as well, Archana. Um, when we began our journey into Canvas, we were also fortunate because our high school district we are part of, uh, they were already on Canvas and we had assistance, um, very helpful. Uh, the tech folks over there were able to help us. And also OTAN was very helpful. We would um, contact our coach, Francisca, who's here. Uh, we need training on Canvas. And she would set up training with one of the specialists at OTAN. So that was the benefit or a huge perk in being part of the DLAC program was we have these amazing resources. Even within our group, we had a coaching group. Um, some of the teams were already familiar with uh, Canvas and they shared some you know, best practices and tips and tools and we we made a lot of shortcuts so that's why i hesitated at first like hmm, where do we begin it was like a smorgasbord for us but this uh with the community colleges it sounds excellent they're well planned they've been doing canvas for an, a long time and it sounds like they've got it down and i i agree that um or i believe that we we do need a more uh you know we need a method or uh, a certain approach, like for adult education, because I found that, and I'll share my canvas in a moment, but I found that our needs were different than a college um, setup. So, um, so yeah. I experimented in a different way with canvas. Part of, part of what we were doing too, is we were, you know, like Jill was saying, we were experimenting with uh, canvas implementation. Um, YouTube videos were, I, the problem is there's so much variety of, of, of information to, 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 that you could learn from. Um, sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a dearth of, it's, it's too much information to, 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 be able to manipulate and, and know what is the right thing to do. Um, what I what I ended up doing is working a lot with um, uh, just kind of experimenting and slowly building things. And like we we mentioned, we created a pilot program at the very end of last year, end of last school year, where we created a, a small unit and. I piloted it out with our existing classes and tried to figure out, okay, what is the sections that are working? What are the sections that are not working? Yeah. Some of the technical stuff behind at least um, um, populating our, cl our classes, um, much of that was already taken care of because the high school that our district is, is uh, that our, the high school district that we're connected with had already integrated the ASAP um, roster mm -hmm. and connected it with our, our um, uh, Canvas module. So all of those, we simply had to populate the, the student ID numbers and it came in directly into our um, um, Canvas roster. So that was a very lucky thing. We did not have to individually enter student data into, the, uh, into our classrooms. So that was a very, very seamless transfer that, but that was done because our high schools had already converted their, mm -hmm. their whole uh, uh, system into using Canvas. So all of that material, all of that legwork had already be done, been done by the high school. Um, there was another question. There are a couple from Lynn here. I'm just- Okay. 
So I want to add something to um, what Lynn asked about training. So mm -hmm. I think um, DLAC came at a great time for us because, you know, um, OTAN um, helps all schools with integrating technology with uh, hybrid education and all of that. And our administrators jumped at it, put in our application. So please attend, if possible, uh, tomorrow's session at 1 p.m., where we will be talking about coaching, coach and collaborate with um, Francisca and two of our other uh, partner agencies whom we are uh, partnering in DLAC. So it's, it, you know, all the, um, the collaborations that we did, that also helped us to kind of like experiment and figure out, you know, what to do, how to approach hybrid um, learning besides, of course, the support we got from um, our uh, school and uh, the PDs that we all attended. Mm -hmm. So um, Lynn has another question on, how many students in your classes? Um, well, because of the because because of the ongoing enrollment that we've been, um, um, you know, I was saying that much of our enrollment this last year has been practically a monthly enrollment. Um, my numbers for my evening class are for well, for both classes. My numbers are probably over. 30 students per class. So I have a full, I have full classes, you know, both my morning and my evening class, they're, they're over 30 students uh, on the, on the roster. Um, Mine are um, about 20 students in the mornings, level five. And I have a, we have a full, uh, we had to expand our flex distance learning program. We use Burlington and all those classes have waiting lists by a student appointment only. So that's going pretty well as well. Yeah, as well. The, the really neat thing, the really neat thing about the, and, and one of the things that, that worked really, really well, um, that, you know, I met, I spoke about this, the, the digital literacy support staff idea um, really allowed students to, even if they were on, even after the boot camp process, if they were uncomfortable about a particular um, um, facet with the with online learning or or technology in general, um, those the, that support staff was available. That support staff was available to deal with those students on a one to one basis, and that was critical to be able to go face to face, one on one, on the days that they were physically in school, and resolve problems. We'd have students bring their laptops to school to show them how to do things physically on their own laptops. So that was, that program worked out really, really well to integrate that technology part and the technology support. So. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a question about um, integrating Burlington um, English in uh, Canvas. So we have about a um, little over 10 minutes. Jill, if you want to share your Canvas and, you know. Okay. I don't um, integrate Burlington in my level five. I'm using Future Advanced. However, I think Elizabeth responded and said that Burlington mm -hmm. is working on shells. Elizabeth, do you want to share a little bit? about Burlington, they they are, um, we, we heard a little bit yesterday as well, that they have some sure. changes. I actually had the chance to meet with a Burlington rep um, a couple of weeks nice. ago. Um, and she mentioned that they're working on what she called shells. Um, basically, they're gonna try and integrate different LMS okay. um, products with Burlington so that we don't have to do this whole, I'm in Bur Google Classroom and here's the, uh, Here's the uh, assignment. So, you know, go open up Burlington in yeah. a different window. Um, and then you have to come back here and do Mark is done. Um, I guess their plan is to be able to um, have Burlington open directly from inside the LMS. And so that students, it's a more seamless product, uh, process for students and they don't have to um, go back and forth yes. um, so much. That's my understanding anyway. Yeah, it's kind of weird to have it's kind of weird to have a balance of different um, um, LMSs, and that's one of the things that we noticed with with the the ASE, Archana, that that when we're 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 looking at at having yeah. um, 
when we're tech. Exactly. When we're working as tech, as a separate system, and having students going into, for example, CK-12 as a separate system and having them use Canvas as an as a alternate, all of these different bits and pieces did not really kind of like gel well. So, so it's, it's hard to look at Canvas necessarily as a, a be-all and end-all kind of a thing, especially for adult ed, where you have to be very um, nimble. Right, you have to be nimble to to solve students and to to address students exactly where they are and help them with the, the their own individual needs. Exactly. Wow. Any other questions? Those are good. I like that. So, Jill, were you going to share your screen again for just yeah. a second? We have just a few minutes here. Okay. Let's see. Am I sharing? It looks like I'm sharing already. Yeah. Okay. Share again. All right. So let me share my Canvas classroom for a moment. I have to get out of this dashboard into another. Um, there it is. Okay. Now I have to share. Sorry. So I look, I look at Canvas like a choice board for my students. Am I sharing now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Let me move this out of the way. There we go. Okay. So what was it? And I've been modifying uh, this since we started with the pilot. Um, I've changed out the buttons a couple of times, but I, what I found works are these eight buttons for now. Um, number one, if my student can log on to Canvas, they can find that Zoom link. I don't have to keep emailing. If once they're in the, into Canvas, they can click and get to the Zoom class. Same thing with emailing me. So these were two important buttons. This is an old one. Oops, I'm in the wrong one. <laughs> I changed these buttons already. Oh boy, sorry. I used to have this week, that didn't work. I've got a million of these, so here we go. There's Case Connect. Um, okay, so here's my current one. So then I have student conferences. So uh, they add their names and we have uh, teacher student support time. So we meet, uh, we dedicate the last half an hour of the day to meeting with our students individually. So they put in their names and we keep track of our schedule that way. So that works nicely. Another thing we do is keep track of the calendar. So what holidays are coming, what tests are coming up, um, and EL civics, and so on. Um, so the main canvas canvassy things are um, today's lesson. So I'm ignoring these links. So if you're a college person, you're probably appalled. Oh, what are you doing? I moved the links here onto this interface. So today's lesson would be um, the Google Doc that I update. So maybe they'll be whatever we're doing. Uh, this is kind of sparse because I was busy this week. Um, but so the, for example, here's the future advanced um, activities that they know they need to go to. So I do a basic outline of the day and uh, the students follow along. And then if they miss class, they can go back. Oh, they did a past perfect lesson and they can update themselves. And let's see, got things in my way here. Go back home. So today's lesson changes every day. And then discussion, that's just like normal Canvas online teaching and learning. Um, you just put, put in a good discussion um, question, have them write paragraphs or whatever level. You can work on their writing. They're responding to each other and learning from each other. And it's topical. Um, vocabulary, again, my love, Quizlet. So I, I try to stay with the academic word list. I look at future, uh, what's coming up. And actually, this time, we're, we've just moved into EL Civic. So we're working on getting a job. So we're working on all these different words here for getting a job. 
getting ready for EL Civics. And then they have their weekly test. And then I like to keep a library now. And so because my students are moms in the morning working with their kids, I have uh, linked up getepic.com <clears throat> to the book. So this is from last month um, with presidents, um, Black History Month and Martin Luther King. So we have these books here that we were reading through and the students are all enrolled into the getepic.com classroom as well. So I can see how their progress is. And, and, and what's nice, of our, I didn't get to see it. Are you familiar with Get Epic? I'm not signed in, sorry. Oopsie. It's awesome. The books are, you turn the pages digitally. Sometimes there's quizzes at the end. And they're, you know, they're different. They're geared toward K through 12. But again, it's very enjoyable for the students to just um, catch up on history or topical, um, whatever's happening with holidays. It's really good. I highly recommend getepic.com. Okay, any questions about that so far? I can't see anyone. Okay. And yeah. Jill, what is the cost? Because it's not free, right? It's free. Oh, it is free? Ah, yeah. I thought it wasn't. Let me see if I can log, me, log on better so I can actually show you the app. So I need to log in. So as a teacher, educator, let me see what I'm doing. Okay, I guess I'll continue with Google. Usually I'm logged in, so I don't know what's going on. Okay. So I have my own library. Now I, I opened up Martin, Martin Luther King Jr. And it's nice because you just turn the page and I can put them into breakout rooms and they read together. Or if I'm in the classroom, I project it on the screen or I assign it for homework, maybe a chapter, um, and it's, it's awesome. So my library, I start to put things together. Some of my favorites from childhood, Laura Ingalls, we had the Christmas, we did Thanksgiving, Squanto, Thanksgiving Day. It's just nice to um, bring in the culture and, uh, and they can share with their kids. They also have uh, books on many countries as well. So you can explore the different subjects. There's so much, as you can see, and it's free. So I link it up to uh, Canvas, my Canvas library, and I change out the books um, from there. So your library is, is, is housed in, in Epic or your library is housed in Canvas? Well, its base is Canvas, Canvas, but I just link. I just okay. So you just link it. So those are direct links to to the Epic page. Interesting. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So the students Good. just go there, and then I can see on my Get Epic student roster how the students are doing, who's reading, and who's who's engaged, and um, and I can add to the library, and they can add to their own libraries. So it's great. I highly Very recommend cool. this. Very good. So we have about two minutes if there are any okay. other other questions okay people have other questions got two more minutes especially if there's any questions about you know the 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 creation of the um the 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 case connect that whole idea of case connect i think everyone is is, is also the the the, the 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 culling together of all of these different bits and pieces that um, um, we experience during the orientation process, even that four day four day process that we that we that that's been established, it was kind of um, hodgepodge at the beginning. Okay, how is this going to look? And over the successive um, um, iterations it's gotten to have this this specific format that has worked uh, that has been working uh, well so so Jill is codifying a lot of this together um, um, and making it more and more cohesive through this through our case connect 
uh, portal. So slowly these, these pieces are getting put together. And I mean, it's a work in progress. It definitely is. But it began as that hodgepodge kind of, gosh, what are we going to do kind of a thing. There's a last question. Yeah, one, are you planning to continue just one minute more, one more minute, Francisca? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and answer okay. that question. About, you know, post pandemic, what's the plan? Whether we're going to go hybrid? Oh. And the presentation link, if someone can do that well. Yeah. Oh, there post pandemic. That's a very big Good question. I don't really know. That is that is in the hands of other powers. Mystery Usha, who's here? <laughs> I, I say that with such mystery because uh, our director is here as well. So <laughs> that that's all in her hands. <laughs> but we know technology is here to stay, and most likely we will remain in the hybrid format as yes. well as may, we do offer some online classes specifically. And some teachers are ready to go back into the classroom more than just two days a week. So we just want to close with this quote, technology will not replace great teachers. Keep that in mind. But technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational. 